Um, when we first met, I, I used to think that I could pray for divine love and I didn't really have to be concerned with truth and it would take care of itself. I know now that was wrong and I have a capacity for more understanding of that. Could you say why you have to grow in truth and love and if you stop in one area, you're not, you're not going to, I'm not going to pass over into the fifth sphere if I have some very basic errors in me. Mm. And in the first century, I made the statement that the truth will set you free. And I notice I didn't say love will set you free. And I said truth will set you free. The reason why I said that was because a lot of times when we begin our progression, we're not in a state of love. But we can be in a state of truth before we get into a state of love. And so the truth is like the doorway to love, if you like. It's the, it's, it's the only thing that can lead us into a condition of love if we're not in a condition of love when we begin. And so loving the truth, searching for the truth, is going to be a really, really key part of your progression. Always going to be a key part of your progression. Even when you're in a state of one with God, the only thing after then possibly that will keep you growing will be your desire for more truth. Because once you're in a state of bliss, um, you've got no negative reasons for, you know, nothing to avoid, nothing that you're wanting to get away from in order to progress. So the only thing that's really going to keep you progressing is your desire to search for more, to be closer to God, to, to search for more truth about God. That's really the biggest thing that's going to keep you progression, progressing in your path. And then, after a while, what you start realizing is that to God, truth is also such an extremely important thing. If you look at every single thing that's gone wrong with the earth today, and when I say the earth, I mean mankind on the earth today, the majority of them are because mankind are in a state of not accepting truth. You look at all the facades, and all of them are the result of mankind wanting to actually present a lie as truth. And so progression in love is not possible unless you're willing to face truth. It's just, and it's never going to be possible if you don't face truth. <coughs> and you're going to need to face truth on two levels. You're going to firstly need to face truth of what's inside of yourself. And secondly, you're going to need to finish up facing truth if you want to be at one with God. You're going to need to be facing God's truth. What is God's truth in terms of the creation of the universe and all of those bigger picture things? You'll need to see both. And if you refuse, what a lot of people do is they say, all right, I want to know the truth of God's universe. I want to know this beautiful universe that we're living in and how that's affecting me and everything. But most people do not want to know the truth about themselves. And that's the main reason why most people don't progress beyond a certain point. They learn all of the truths about the universe, and unfortunately, because they're not progressing themselves emotionally, they can only learn it intellectually. And in that process, all of these emotions, that are, these emotional truths that are within, these, these errors that are within that we believe are true, that we're not facing because we don't want to see the truth of what we're doing, all of those things that are within stay and remain within. And they will continue staying and remaining in until I have a love of all truth, not just the truth of what's external to me. Does that make sense? Giselle? I have a real problem with the word truth because it's used in so many ways, especially in metaphysical circles, and everybody's searching for truth, but everybody has a different idea of what that truth is. Mm. Would you define that one more time for us, please? So when I talk about truth, I am talking about God's truth, the absolute truth. I'm not talking about your truth. They are two totally different things. Right. Often a person can be in a state where they believe something to be true, like the murderer believes that murdering somebody is okay. Obviously they would, they believe that, otherwise they wouldn't do it, right? 
So their truth is that it's okay to murder. That is not God's truth, obviously. And so that's an extreme, but we often have uh, all of these viewpoints about what we think are true, what we believe is true, but often what we believe is true is far, far different to what is the actual truth. And what I like, the way I see it is that what we believe is true is potentially true, but it also is potentially quite false. And until God tells me differently, I won't know whether it's true or not, until I actually enter that relationship with God and have God show me through her emotions what is true and what isn't. And I won't really know what is true and what isn't because I'm coming from a position of error. Mm. So when people in the New Age movement in particular talk about remaining in their truth, right, what they really say is important for you to remain truthful about how you feel. But often when they say that, they're really talking about avoiding situations that are confronting to them. Right? Often yeah. that's what they're really yeah. talking about. Yeah. And they're not being honest about it. Yeah. Right? All they're doing is they're saying, all right, no, I don't want to, I need to stay in my truth here. I don't want to spend time with that person. But if they were staying in their truth, that person had been attracted into their life through the law of attraction <laughs> to trigger an emotion within them. If they were really staying in truth, they would recognize that truth. Uh, exactly. yeah. So a lot of times people use staying in truth as an excuse to actually run away from truth. Uh, mm -hmm. And if we continue to do that, then we are going to stagnate emotionally and also stagnate in our progression with God. The best way to know what the truth is, is are you receiving divine love right now or not? <coughs> if the answer is no, I'm not, then right now there's something that you are not or I am not actually facing the truth about. And the law of attraction right now is actually demonstrating to me what that is. I am just ignoring it. So don't view it as God withdrawing her love because she doesn't withdraw her love. You prevent her love from flowing into your soul because of your refusal of the truth. There's the Holy Spirit, I sometimes call the Spirit of Truth, for that reason. The Holy Spirit can only connect. Remember I said last night that the Holy Spirit is a connector mm -hmm. between God and you. Right? So there is this connection that is connected from God that can connect him to you, and the love of God flows through that connection. But the Holy Spirit can only connect to you when you are in a state of truth from God's perspective, not from your own. So as long as you are in a state of truth from God's perspective, you and, and have a longing for God's love, you will receive her love. The instant that you choose to retain what you believe is true, not seeing that God actually would not feel that that is true, the moment you choose to retain that belief and you're conscious of it and the law of attraction is trying to demonstrate that to you, there will be a severing of the connection. The plug, if you like, will be pulled out. Not by God, but by you, by your refusal to accept truth. And then it's a matter of you wanting, do you really want to discover it? How strong is your free will? How strong is your will? How strong is your intention? To discover what the truth really is. And once it's strong enough, you will find, you will see exactly what it is emotionally, feel the emotion that's preventing you from the discovery of that truth, and straight away that connection will re-establish and the flow of love will flow again. How do you know what is God's truth? Did he write it somewhere? Is somebody, I mean, is there, is there, is there something that actually says, not a book of man either, okay? Is there something that God actually says, all right, look, this is what I really believe. I mean, some way that you can actually know this, how? As you receive God's love, God's laws of truth are written on your heart. Oh, it's what you know inside. It's, but it's not, it's not what you think you know. It's actually what resonates with love inside of yourself. And what actually happens is, with this love, 
comes knowledge and wisdom and, and a lot of other things as well as this love enters you if you operate in harmony with truth with it. So the key, the key is you don't need to know whether something is out of harmony or in harmony. All you need to do is feel the relationship between yourself and God. If you're feeling it and you can feel the connection, then what you are currently doing is in harmony with God's love. So therefore, it's in harmony with God's truth. If you are not feeling it, if you are not feeling that connection between yourself and God at that moment, then what you are choosing to feel or think or do at that moment is not in harmony with God's love. You don't need to know anything else. You don't need to have a book. You just need to trust your emotions at any time and trust that connection. If you trust that connection 100% of the time, what will happen is you'll know the instant that you've just done something that's out of harmony. So, for instance, that's why I could say to you that drinking coffee will, will actually disconnect you, right? Because I know that every time I've done it, there's been a disconnection. Oh, that I've never been connected. I drink Diet Coke 24 hours a day. <laughs> there will be moments where you have a pure desire for God's love, and you would have received it. Right. No, I do. I mean, I have the desire, but I'm just saying if i got to give up my Diet Coke, I don't know, I even forgot. I might not even go there. I don't know. Well, that's it. And this is, this, is stuff we, this is stuff we often face. All right, you know, that's honest. I don't give up yeah. my Diet Coke for nobody. Okay. I mean, you know. And, and at some point in the future, you'll say to yourself, well, was the Diet Coke really worth this relationship with God? I never thought of Diet Coke as interfering with it, to tell you the truth. But the receiving of truth, isn't the receiving of truth a spoon-fed thing? I mean, you kind of accept it a little bit at a time, you know? You don't no, have on a particular day, you don't get all the truth at once and just, that's you, it. You don't have to be spoon-fed it. But emotionally, <coughs> usually we do finish up being spoon-fed it right. because emotionally we have so much resistance to it. But we don't have to. If, you, know, you look at a child, a child is very, is not hardly, particularly a very young child, is hardly resistant to truth at all. Right. It's only when, you know, we're browbeaten and through some emotional programming that they become resistant. And you will become into that state, you will come into a childlike state, exactly like that. At the moment what's happening is we've, we've got so much mistrust, hey, there's so much mistrust and all of these other things going on within us because of all these things that have happened in our lives that we can't trust and all these things that have happened that are painful and we don't want to re-experience that pain again in another situation. And all the people that have misled us down all of these different roads that we've sick and tired of travelling down because they didn't work either and this didn't work either and that. And so in the end we get ourselves into this state where we're so resistive to truth because who knows? We well, don't know if it's truth yet or not. Right? The key thing, obviously, is get that relationship with God going. Feel the flow of love with God coming through you. Then you will know what is truth and what is not just by that relationship. And you won't need a book. You will not need anything other than that flow, trusting that flow. And when it disconnects, I know I'm not there. I know there's something going on in me. I know that something's going on in me that I'm rejecting. And then it's just a matter of, am I willing to face it or do I want to stay in my addiction? Do I want to stay in this place where I'm addicted to getting this certain thing from somebody or not seeing this particular emotion? 